My name is uh, Suhag Parikh and I'm uh, one of the physicians with the pediatric bone marrow transplant uh, uh, group at Duke University. Um, I am an assistant professor with the Duke University School of Medicine and I have an interest in uh, transplantation of uh, non-malignant diseases uh, including uh, <coughs> diseases like sickle cell, thalassemia and uh, a variety of uh, metabolic uh, disorders and immune deficiencies. The patients with uh, sickle cell disease and uh, thalassemia uh, suffer a lot and they also uh, die at an earlier age than the average population. And not all the patients with sickle cell disease have very, very bad disease, but there's definitely a subgroup of patients who tend to have lots of problems. And these are the type of patients who, if they are already having lots of problems by 10 or 15 years of age, these are the patients who are going to have um, a decreased uh, survival. So they'll have pain for which they will have to be in the hospital for several times in a year. They might have involvement of the lungs. Uh, their lungs can slowly start failing. They can have anemia for which they are dependent on blood transfusions. And they can have lots of problems related to that. So the bottom line is that these sub, this subgroup of patient has a very high chance of dying before 30 or 40 years of age. The average uh, lifespan is about 80 approximately 80 years. So that's 80 years of good life as opposed to 30, 40 years of miserable life. Uh, their cost uh, of care is tremendous. Uh, if they are on blood transfusion, 40 to 50,000 is minimum per year. Uh, and every admission in the hospital, ICU stay, it just adds up to this underlying cost. Uh, and you multiply that year after year after year. So the cost of uh, sickle cell care is enormous. If we can prevent progression of these serious problems, then we can give them a much very good quality of life in the long run. And it amounts to basically a cure. And they will be able to do all the normal activities uh, appropriate for their age. Uh, patients with thalassemia are dependent on blood transfusion month after month. And the blood transfusions uh, uh, that they receive uh, chronically increase the iron level in their body. And this iron in the body damages all the organs, including the heart, liver, lungs, endocrine organs. Uh, and over time, the patient's organs fail. They develop heart failure, they develop uh, liver failure, and uh, they die from the complications of iron overload. And transplant is a curative therapy. Thalassemia is a very prevalent disease in um, countries, especially in the Middle East and India. Uh, you know, even if you think 1 to 4 percent of the population, it, if you multiply that by 1 billion, that translates into a large number of patients with thalassemia. Now, unfortunately, most of these uh, patients with thalassemia who, who need the transplant, uh, they can't afford the current cost of care. So I think the potential for helping them is enormous, especially India, Middle East, Thailand, the entire Southeast has a huge uh, thalassemia population. Some of my close, uh, you know, friends have had children with thalassemia. And it's very, uh, it's very disastrous uh, the, the way it affects the family life and the child especially. There's a whole group of diseases uh, which are caused by genetic defects. <clears throat> there are other types of enzyme deficiencies which can lead to a category of disease called leukodystrophies. And leukodystrophy basically means, leuko means white, dystrophy means something is not right. So <clears throat> leukodystrophy basically means there is some, something is not right with the white matter of the brain. There are some genetic diseases where because of the mutations, this white matter of the brain degenerates. So we call these diseases as demyelinating disorders or leukodystrophies. Without the intervention, these diseases are quite progressive. Uh, they, are, they are like relentless. So th that's the kind of progression that you want to avoid. Right now, we are not d transplanting those patients. We are just saying to them that <clears throat> it's too risky and we really can't do much for you right now. The only way we can help them is by developing less uh, risky uh, procedures. We, we are quite sure that it's going to be uh, safer much safer than the current approaches and we know that we will have the donors. Uh, what we have to do is uh, treat patients and then modify it along the way 
to make it more and more perfect. Because we have done this uh, conventional transplant for the last 30 or 40 years and I think the re outcomes have uh, plateaued. We are not making any more progress with this. I am very excited about this collaboration with Dr. Ilstad and uh, University of Louisville. What is so nice is it's, uh, Dr. Ilstad is a very easy person to work with. She is very enthusiastic. She is quite uh, excited about this herself and that makes a big difference. For more information, please visit nfctr.org. Thank you.